Greetings everyone and welcome back to the Inside EVs YouTube channel. This week I have a bit of a treat for all those um, minivan and uh, people carrier lovers out there, even van and commercial vehicle lovers who also like electric vehicles and who were maybe a bit upset that Mercedes chose not to sell this uh, actually pretty great EQV in the States. I'm going to show you around it a little bit, show you some of its uh, peculiarities and then I'm going to take it out uh, for a little test drive and see how it handles the open road. This particular example is finished in quite a striking shade of white. I'm not sure if it's uh, specific to the EQV although it does have some uh, colors that you cannot get on the regular diesel powered uh, V-Class that you know as the Metris in the United States. And while at first glance it may look like this is just uh, another V-Class or Metris, if you look closer you start to notice a few differences. For instance, the grille is uh, very similar to that of um, other EQ-badged models from Mercedes. And it's actually not closed off. If you can see, there's like a radiator behind there. The front bumper is also unique to the EQV and uh, part of it is closed off. So it's open in the middle here and then this bit is actually completely closed off. Mercedes also chose a very unusual location for the charge port. Here, on this corner of the bumper. And for Europe you have the CCS connector, so you have the Type 2 above and if you open the second flap, you get the full rapid charging solution. This car charges at a maximum 110 kilowatts, which um, puts 80% back into the battery in around 45 minutes. From the 50 kilowatt charger that I tried, you're looking at closer to two hours or above two hours to, um, to get it to the same state of charge. There are also EQV badges on the sides here. The rims are also a special design. And around the back, the only way to tell it apart from other V-Class models is by the badge here. And the fact that there's no, uh, no tailpipe in sight. Although you do get a full size spare. The sliding doors are both electrically operated. So you just pull on the handle and they magically open. And you can do the right side from the key. And then you can like theoretically walk right to the other side. The seats themselves are removable. You can slide them back and forth. So you have two of them here in the front with this um, little picnic table that you can extend outward. So you pull up on this and then you get a little table. You obviously have to slide the, the seat back a little bit. It might be quite an uncomfortable position. Or I think you can slide the, the entire console with the table forward if you need it. And you probably need it. And then to put it back down you press on this and without much effort you slide it down and it locks into place. In order to access the rear most um, row of seats, which in this case has three seats, there's a little lever here. And this makes the, the backrest um, recline forward. And then you can just climb in here. And if you want to close the doors, what you can do is just touch the handle. The same goes for the other side. Touch the handle. Pull this seat back in its position. And you're a passenger in the back here. It is worth noting that Mercedes 
uh, in Europe sells this uh, EQV in two length variants. And while the regular V-Class uh, has several length variants, the EQV is only available as either a long or extra long vehicle. My tester today is the extra long, which measures 5.3 meters or around 20 centimeters longer than the, the long version, which is just over 5.1 meters long. Sitting way back here, it actually feels quite comfortable. You get um, cup holders and you even get electric window controls. So if you pull up on this button here, I think the, the key needs to be in the ignition, but the, the glass pops out. It's pretty comfortable back here and roomy enough. You can definitely travel in comfort on very long journeys in this vehicle. Let's move to the driver's seat. See how easy it is to get out of here. Where was that little handle? In the driver's seat, if you've ever sat in a current generation Mercedes, a lot of this will be familiar to you. And if you know the Metris or the, the V-Class, then this will be very familiar to you. What's unique to the EQV, the electric V-Class, is this um, blue material here that I also saw in the EQC, as well as these, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I think you can. They are copper finished instead of the usual silver. The dials themselves are uh, analog, although you do get this screen in the middle here. And where you would expect to find the rev counter in the diesel version, here you have a charge uh, boost economy gauge that just tells you whether or not you're putting uh, juice back into the battery or how much of it you're using. This example also has um, heated and cooled seats. You can also pop the rear windows open from the driver's seat, from these controls here, that's very nice. This is now Mercedes older style steering wheel, but at least Unlike some other vehicles that the automaker still sells or used to sell, like the C-Class that I drove not so long ago, this one actually has a MBUX. And I will show it to you. Another unusual feature of this vehicle is that you actually have to physically put the key in the ignition. You need to turn it once. There's another position. And then you turn it again and it says ready. And now you're basically ready to drive. Disengage the parking brake and you're set. And since this is an EV, you also get EV specific menus in the infotainment. There's this EQ menu here that has a consumption, the energy flow chart thing that shows you whether or not you're charging the battery or draining it. And yeah. So this is the interior. Look at all those seats all the way back there. And I think we're ready to take this vehicle for a drive. Okay, so let's see what this rather big electric minivan is all about. Just like with any Mercedes, you push down on the, on the right stock to put it in drive, and it's in drive. It creeps forward when you lift off the brake, silently of course. 
unlike many um, V-Class variants, this one is front wheel drive. It has a single front mounted electric motor that makes just over 200 horsepower and 363 newton meters of torque, which in pound feet is this much. It gives the EQV a respectable sprint time from not to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour of around 11 seconds. And once you're on the move, it actually feels quite sprightly. The standard top speed of this vehicle is 140 kilometers per hour, but you can pay Mercedes extra to have it extended to 160 kilometers per hour. And this particular vehicle does do that speed. You don't really notice this vehicle is front wheel drive because it, um, you cannot disable traction control, so it never loses grip and you don't really know which axle is doing the, the pulling or pushing, in this case pulling. It certainly doesn't feel underpowered with 200 horsepower. I think that's a pretty good uh, value, even if the vehicle itself weighs uh, 2.6 tons. And as you accelerate away, it's super smooth and quiet, as you'd expect from an EV. Although, to be fair, since this is a, a van that's being poshed up to, uh, to make VIPs feel right at home when they're being shuttled from the airport to their, uh, to their hotel room, the quality of the materials, of some of the materials and the, for instance, even the, the little lever that you pull up on to, um, to be able to fold down the, the middle seat, that feels kind of flimsy and cheap and it betrays this car's uh, commercial vehicle roots. However, the general overall experience is a pleasant one. And since this is a, a big and very boxy vehicle, there is some wind noise at speed. I'm now doing close to uh, 60 miles an hour-ish. And I can hear a bit of wind around the A-pillar area, the mirrors, and from somewhere in the back. And the cabin itself is also quite a bit echoey and boomy sometimes. Mercedes has done a decent job of um, sound insulating this vehicle because, as you know, since this is a a diesel vehicle that's been converted to uh, run on electricity, the manufacturer has had to pay extra attention to, uh, to the insulation, to the sound insulation. Because once the clutter of the diesel is gone, you hear more of the other noises like tire roar and uh, especially wind whistle in this vehicle. Tire roar is quite present on this particular tester, but I imagine it has something to do with the uh, with the winter tires that it's running on. But it's a very relaxing vehicle to travel in overall. The suspension is very nice and floaty. It just glides over bumps and its, uh, its heft helps it a bit. I mean, a 2.6 ton vehicle with soft suspension is gonna ride pretty well, isn't it? The battery pack has a total capacity of 100 kilowatt hours but its usable net capacity is 90 kilowatt hours with 98 percent in the battery when I picked the car up from Mercedes it indicated a theoretical maximum possible range of 286 kilometers it's still a, a decent range I think it's not a short range EV and if you really, really pay special attention and drive it very, very carefully, you can probably crack 300 kilometers or 186 miles in it, in the real world. That is possible. Mercedes has also fitted the vehicle with paddles behind the steering wheel. Uh, they are used to adjust to brake regeneration. You get four levels of brake regeneration. The standard level is the one the vehicle starts uh, in. And if you pull on the right paddle once, you get a little plus sign next to the D for drive on the center display. And that basically means you're coasting from what I can tell. While at the same time, if you pull on the left paddle once and then twice, you get two minus signs next to the D. Indicating that with the two minuses there, you are in full regen. 
which almost allows you to one pedal drive. Although, while it does stop, for the last five or seven kilometers per hour, you do need to step on the brake to get the vehicle to completely stop. What would this vehicle be used for? Well, I could see it being used as like a, um, a posh uh, minibus for picking uh, private school kids up from their homes and then taking them back home in the evening. It will also be a means for some companies to show off their green credentials when they pick up important guests from the airport and they could like brag about their luxury electric uh, minivan. And it could also be used as an actual family vehicle for people who maybe are considering buying an SUV, an electric SUV. Because if they don't plan on taking it off-road, the EQV is far better than any electric SUV on the market. Now I know that the Tesla Model S exists and I think it scratches a different itch because it addresses people who want more performance style and they want to stand out and get lots of tech, whereas uh, the EQV is more of a practical utilitarian proposition. And I'm sure that some people will find that attractive. And those same people probably consider the Model X to be a bit flashy and showy and over the top. Although to be fair, this vehicle is kind of like the, the Model X in several ways in that it can carry up to seven people or eight if you specify three seats in the middle row. It has electrically opening rear doors. It's electric, it has a similar size battery pack to the Model X. Where this wins out over the Model X is for actual practicality and space. This thing is massive. And if you think your SUV trunk is big, wait till you see the trunk in this. This longer version has way over a thousand liters of space without moving any of the seats or doing anything with them. And that in cubic feet is this much. But take my word for it, it's super cavernous. And the fact that uh, it's a very square shape with a very low loading sill means it's easy to load like a, a baby stroller in there or something huge and bulky and square. In Romania, this vehicle starts at 74,000 euros, but you can get it closer to 90 if you specify all of the optional extras like um, electric seats, which this vehicle does not have, or the panoramic sunroof, or plenty of the comfort options that you can specify for the rear seats. You can get screens in there. My tester does have some options, it's not the base model. For instance, I have these uh, perforated leather seats, in the front at least, and they are both heated and cooled. So that's nice. I'm not sure if the electric opening doors are also standard. I'll have to check the spec sheet for that. Now I've intentionally taken the vehicle on this road that I know to be very bumpy. This is my uh, go-to stretch of road to test uh, the comfort levels in cars. And the EQV does not disappoint. It just pummels everything into submission, bumps potholes, uh, joins between the, the, the concrete plates that make up this road, which is why it's so bumpy, because it's not really paved over, it's just the plates of concrete jammed into one another. There is a bit of scuttle shake, but do you expect this from a van whose uh, structural rigidity is not that of a, of a sedan? Because it's not designed in the same way as a traditional passenger vehicle. Don't forget, this is a commercial vehicle that gets uh, luxury fittings. Basically, to sum things up, I like this vehicle a lot more than I thought I was going to. It's nowhere near being close to my cup of tea. 
although I do appreciate vans, it's just that they are not the first thing you think about when you think about a fun vehicle. And with the increasing number of fast chargers littered all around uh, Europe's main roads, not many of which are in Romania, it has to be said, but for other markets where they have more chargers than we do, you can genuinely take this on a longer road trip and occasionally stop for 30 minutes to charge, then keep going, then stop again, maybe for some food break or something. I think you could genuinely do actual road trips in this vehicle and you would not be emitting a single gram of, uh, of CO2 out of the tailpipe or the nasty particulates that diesels are so famous for. So what do you think? Do you think Mercedes should have sold this EQV in the States? Or do you think the decision not to sell it was, uh, in fact, uh, a good one? I think, since there are so many minivan lovers in the US, and there are also lots of people who want to drive electric vehicles, I think there would have been a case for this vehicle to be sold uh, stateside. But let us know, tell us in the comments section below if you uh, would like to see this in the States or not. Until the next video, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.